so excited that you're tuning in here, right here on this Facebook page, and, and then out there on YouTube. Just Amen. Once again, we just want to thank you for joining us. We're located at 412 South Vancouver Street at the Midtown Plaza, right behind the Circle K. Amen. I just would like this morning to open up in a word of prayer. How about you open us up this yes, morning? Yes, I'd be grateful to Father God, be coming before you this morning, God. Grateful to be in your house this morning, God. Grateful for um, what you're doing within our lives, Lord, here at yes, Victory Lord. Outreach Tri-Cities. And we just pray, Lord, that you take full control, Lord, of today's service, Lord, from this live stream to the end at altar call, God. I pray, Lord, that you move, God. Your Holy Spirit moves within our service today, Lord. And wherever people are joining us from this morning, whether they're tuning in on live stream at their house, house, Lord, whether at their work, God, whether out there for a morning walk this morning, God, I pray, Lord, that you just move within your within this service this morning, God, and have your way, Lord. I pray your word speaks to every heart, Lord Jesus, and I just pray, Lord, and give this day over to you. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing within our lives, Lord, here at Victory Outreach, and I just pray, Lord, that you just continue to move in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you for that this morning. Uh, I'm Brother Albert. This is my wife's Sister Cheryl, and we're here on behalf of our pastor, Pastor James, Sister Jessica. They want to say welcome this morning, and thank you for tuning in. Uh, Amen. So with that, if you're joining in for the first time this morning, there will be a QR code there on the screen. That's so we can send you information, because we are a church that's always on the move. Yes. We're always doing something. We always have something going on, an event, something planned out. And that's so we can we can uh, get to know you better, and we can send you information as to, uh, as to what we're doing. And Amen. like I said, we are a church on the move this morning. Yes, and also at this time, take the time to tag and share this morning. I'm going to share my this live stream this morning and tag people, you know, tag those family members, those friends that you have there on social media. And, you know, that the Lord can move through something said this morning. The Lord can move through the YouTube, you know, stream when people go back and watch. And, you know, we just want to be used by God. And this is a way that um, we can spread the gospel. You know, we're to go out and spread the gospel and the news of Jesus Christ. So at this time, as we tag and share, you know, um, this is a tool that God's given us. We can use this for good. We can use this to spread the gospel, to, to help reach. You know, someone might be out there that is knows someone that's hurting, that's an addict, that's a gang member. You know, those harder to reach people. And you might know somebody and be able to tag them this morning. And, you know, the Holy Spirit can move right there. The Lord can move at any time. It doesn't have to be here in the house. It could be out there in those streets, and then the Lord will bring him into the house of God. That's so at right. this time, you know, take that time to tag and share. And also, if you have prayer requests this morning, leave those prayer requests in the comments section. We would love to pray with you throughout the week, right here on our live stream this morning. And also, let us know where you're joining us from. Yes. Also, I just want to give everybody this morning the opportunity to give this morning, because the Bible says give, and you will get it. Whatever measure you give will be given back to you. So I don't want to rob you of that blessing that God has for your life or, 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 that, or that family member to be saved that God has for your life when we give this morning. So right there on the screen, this morning we'll, uh, there will be three ways to give. You can give in person here at the sanctuary. You can scan that QR code and, and give right there here online. It will take you to the Push Pay app, and you can, you can do a reoccurring give. Uh, you can you can give uh, an offering right there on that Push Pay app, or you can text the word VO Tri Cities to seven seven nine seven seven and follow the on screen prompts. And right there, you will be able to give. I believe it takes you right to the Push Pay app, and uh, you can give. So, like I said, we, we're givers, and, and God takes care of our every need. Amen. That's right. We give, and God gives us back. We take care of God's business, and He takes care of our business. So Amen. when we're given this morning, make sure we're given from a heart that's a, a genuine heart because otherwise, why are we doing it, right? Amen, so yes. there's your opportunity right there on the screen. Amen. Yes, good morning, uh, Brother John. In, they're in Montana. That's um, Brother Albert's brother yeah. there in Montana. Thanks for joining us He'll faithfully every week. He's coming. Amen. Coming Can't wait to see November. you. I believe that this morning. And Amen. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. Amen. As last Sunday, Pastor James preached from Genesis 128, and the title was Limitless. Limitless, yep. If you're, if you're not planting seeds, it's one thing he said. If you're not planting seeds, then you're not going to be fruitful. And 
God's called us to be fruitful here in this ministry, in your life, around your family. We need to be fruitful in what we're doing. Amen. Amen. Living a life with no limits, you know, with limitless. um, We must walk with success success and victory, not letting the devil see us sweat. Right. And, And, you know, we get to a place sometimes in ministry. And we don't want to be to a place where we're satisfied of where we're at. Amen. We want to be continuing to grow. And, and right. he said this. He asked this. Have you have you arrived at a place of satisfaction? We can't be at a place of satisfaction because God's always got us going somewhere, doing something, reaching Amen. a soul, Amen. reading the hurting and the lost in, in our communities. We can't be satisfied and just come to church on a Sunday or a Wednesday or a Friday. We gotta we gotta be out there evangelizing. We gotta be out there doing the will of God and what God's called us to do. Amen. Yes, God sees us and he, God gives us talents and he sees us with our talents and we have to be able to increase and be successful with the talents that God has given us. Yes, what are we doing with that talent that God gave us? I don't know what it is. Maybe it's teaching. Maybe it's reaching others. Maybe it's, uh, maybe I'm like for me, I have a talent of fixing things. I can't fix people, but I can fix every. And God uses those tools for me to reach other people. Maybe they're broke down on the side of the road, and I pull over, and I get to witness to them and share my testimony of the goodness of Jesus Christ in my life. Amen. Yes, yes. We may see limits on ourselves, but God sees us fit. We need to take those limits off and do what God has called us to do and not set limits on ourselves because God has something more for each of us to grow in. That's why the title was Limitless. We're limitless in God's hands. In God's hands, we can do the supernatural. In God's hands, we can reach generations and impact generations. In God's hands, we can reach those treasures out of darkness. But we got to take the limits off. Amen, amen. It's called limitless for a reason. Yes. Sometimes we, we, we may have struggles because of our own selves and our own doing. Sometimes we wrestle with our minds. And sometimes we wrestle with, oh, why would God want to use me? Or why would God use... You know, us as, as individuals, it's because God wants to use every hurting person of the world to reach those that are broken even more. Amen. Amen. Yes, yes. You know, salvation is free from God, but we must work to save souls and spread the gospel. Once we're saved, we need to continue on to reach those other harder to reach people, to reach every person. You know, everyone is... Um, needs to hear the gospel so they have an opportunity to receive jesus god gives us the opportunities we have to work and we can't dig a hole pastor referred to it as digging a hole we can't dig a hole and put put in an opportunity in a hole right we can't let the gifts the gifts hide in dormant ask and he will and we shall receive it so ask if you don't know what your gifts are or your talents you need to be in prayer you need to fast and ask god to, to reveal them to you reveal it to you so you know which way to go and which direction it all it all comes down to prayer it all comes down to fasting it all it all, it says in the bible asking you shall receive and when you ask god will let you see what he has planned for your life amen amen and we must live a life with a purpose God's given us a purpose, each and every one of us. And, you know, there's no limit. The heavens is the limit. And how much room do we have from here on earth to heaven? That's right. We cannot put ourselves as a limit. We can't put limits on ourselves. Uh If we put limits on ourselves and we hinder God's hand in our lives, we can't can't hinder God's hand by putting limits. Oh, I can't go over there. I I can't do this. I can't do that. But it's take the limit off and see where God will take you. Yeah, and the limit off God. You know, God has no limit. We can't put God in a box. Yeah, God can't be in a box. I I did a devotion on that one. Putting God in a box. Uh We we tie, tie, tie God's hands. Amen. How can we have a movement if we have God's hands tied, but we keep God in a box and, and limit what we what He has for our lives? Amen. So yes. We're here to we're here to take Tri Cities. We're here to to take the limits off and, and to reach those treasures out of darkness and to reach those that, that nobody else can reach. Amen. That's what our ministry does is reaches those that can't be reached. That's right. God's given us the anointing to be a, and the power to step on scorpions, to, to go into the to the alleys and into those places that nobody else wants to go. Amen. What are we doing? Have we got God in a box and we limited him. We got to take those limits off. And that's what he was preaching. Amen. Amen. So yes. we need to continue on. Yes. Wednesday night, we had a powerful night with Sister Deanna. Woo. She preached a fire message called All or Nothing. That's right. No matter how tired or drained we are, we have to give it all to God. 
we have to give it all. Amen. We can't just hold back. It kind of went in line with pastor's message, yes. taking the limits off. Uh -huh. She spoke about opportunities that you God, God gives you and you waste it. Man, wow. You know, God gave us opportunities. Are we wasting it? Are we taking it? And are we running with it? Amen. They fall in line in, in a suit with pastor's message, right? Amen. Yes. Don't miss missing out on God's given opportunity. That's closing the God door on God. That's putting God back in that box. We don't want to put God in that box. Amen. You know, sometimes we may grow weary, but we have to remember that Jesus gave his all, and that's hope, that's encouragement for us to give our, uh, give our all, you know, for Jesus to do what he's called us to do. Yes, and she spoke in, uh, on the Samaritan woman when Jesus went to the well. She spoke on, on that woman, and, 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 and do we respond in disbelief? Because when she was standing there, she didn't believe Amen. that. What, what, you know, that God was use her. God was using her. She didn't want to believe that. Think she she was in disbelief that you know why 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 her? Yeah yeah so. yeah yeah. We have to take our focus off the natural and see through the supernatural. And that was a great reminder. What you know, we're not to look at the natural. We know that God works through the supernatural. We need to have faith that God's going to move and work through the and supernatural. See, see, I want to I want to touch base on this. See, God used Sister D to bring a powerful message on Wednesday, Amen. just like yes. he did the Samaritan woman when he told her to go and, and share what I can do for you. So he, there, there's two, two, two powerful women of God Amen. right yes. there in yes. the gospel and Sister D, and, and there's some powerful women of God here in the church. See, God Amen. can use anybody if we take those limits off, Amen. if we take those opportunities that they, God gives us. That's right, yes, yes. You know, all along, you know, we may be looking for someone, something to satisfy us, when all along it's Jesus. And just as the Samaritan woman was looking for someone else to satisfy her, all along it was Jesus. That's right, that's right. You know, and it was already a plan des destined for, for her to go and do it, be there. Jesus, it was already planned for it. It Amen. all fell into what God wanted and the plan for God. But yes. we need to continue on this morning. We can keep going. I wish I wish we had more time. Amen. But Amen. It was such a powerful week. I, I encourage you, don't miss out. We're here at 412 South Vancouver Street at the Midtown Plaza, right behind the Circle K. I encourage you to come. We have some powerful messages of God right here in our sanctuary. You know, the Holy Spirit moves here. You don't want to miss out. You want to make your way this morning. You still have time this morning. I encourage yes, you, yes. get out of that seat, get in your car and make your way here. Amen. Amen. Yes. We all have some announcements. You know, we have a busy week coming up. Um, we want to remind you that our pastors are here for you. If you ever need um, some counseling, you need some guidance, go ahead and call the office at 509-380-0655. Set up an appointment with them. Maybe you have some encouragement to tell them. Come in, set up an appointment, and, you know, bring that testimony of what God's doing in your life. You know what? You want to touch pastor's heart? Come in with a powerful message of what God's done for you. Amen. Let them know the goodness of Amen. God in Amen. your life. Just give them some encouragement, you know. Even if you, even if you need a counsel, make sure you call that number. Amen. The doors yes. are here. They're, they're, that's why they're here. Amen. Amen. So what do we got coming up? This week we have Wednesday, October 30th, Winning Wednesdays Together at 7 p.m. Right, but it's Hallways of Hell. Yes, Hallways of Hell is the 28th through the 30th. Yes. So, yes, we will continue with our Winning Wednesdays with the Hallways of Hell, this drama that's that right. they've been working hard on, you know, preparing for. It starts Monday. Through, the, through Wednesday, you don't want to miss out. There's a there's a link right there on the uh, on our Facebook page. You can go to that link, and I believe it it shows what you know a guy being drugged into hell, and we it, it's going to be powerful. You don't want to miss out. You want to be here. Amen. Amen. Yes. We, we also on. have Timmy and Des. They're going to UTC in January to Amsterdam. Timmy's also selling pre-ordered T-shirts to raise finances. Right. You know we're investing. Those invest, are thirty-five invest, dollars. Invest. Also, we have one more. Pastor Izzy Vasquez is coming in November twenty-first to the twenty-third. Don't miss out. That's right. Don't miss out. You want to be here? So it's going to be three days. We're going to do a, a, a leadership on a Saturday. He's going to be here on a Friday preaching. On a Sunday preaching. You don't want to miss out on that weekend, Amen. the twenty-first, November twenty-first through the twenty-third. And right here, we want you to continue to, to be tuned in because our pastor James, he's going to be preaching here this. Morning, right here yes. in the sanctuary. Amen. So please make your way here this morning and stay tuned. We're going to switch you over to YouTube right now. So tag and like and share there on YouTube. Amen. 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 So thank you for
joining us. Yes. God's going to do something great for you. Amen. Amen. Say amen and amen. Come on. Are you excited? You got to clap louder than that. Shout louder than that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. You get to uh, be seated, amen. Thank you for being here this morning. You chose to come to Victory Irish Church of Tri-City, a church that we call a church on the move. Not moving, but on the move. Eventually we'll move, amen, but on the move. We're doing something every, every time we get a chance. We call it opportunities. It's opportunities. These are opportunity for us to expand, to grow, amen, and to put our faith in tests. Say tests, right? So the, the Run for Hope, amen, we raised over $40,000. Come on now. If you're here for the first time or if you're new, you look around and how? You'd be like, how? You're like looking around like, how? I don't know how, but he did it. Hallelujah. It's called faith. Come on, it's called faith. And trusting the Lord, amen. I believe that over 300 and some churches out there in VO, they're asking, how? Hello, somebody. We're the top 10 churches in the whole international church. Hello, come on, give yourself a hand praise for that. Get it. Might not mean nothing to you, but it's mean to me a lot. Hallelujah. Out of 350 plus churches out there, amen, we're the top 10 that brought in finances to the kingdom of God for the great purpose of reaching the hurting people of the world. Some of us can't even cross the border legally, hallelujah. But our finances can cross the border, any border. Can I get an amen? And reach those individuals that are actually hurting, amen. So you're not, you're not, we're not feeding those that are hungry. We're not putting a video with somebody that's starving out there in Africa. And say gift, right? We're going for those that are, we're specialists in reaching the hurting people of the world. When you say hurting people, those misfits. Those alcoholics, those drug addicts, those prostitutes, amen. Do you know that drugs is everywhere in the world? You know that? Right? I came to Tacoma, Washington for California, and I thought it was, it was drug-free over here. End up in the hilltop knowing that they were in the battle of drugs. Hallelujah. I was in the Mecca. I was like, oh, my God. Drugs is everywhere. Hello, somebody. So drugs is in Africa. Drugs is in Mexico. Drugs is in Nicaragua, Indonesia, China, Japan, what? Russia, what? Everywhere in the world. And that's our goal and our vision to reach those individuals there. And we might not be able to go ourselves physically. Why? Because we might be felons. We might we can't get a passport or whatever it is. But there are some individuals in Victory Outreach that they could go anywhere. Hallelujah. And plan a city, and plan a church, and plan a, a, a Christian recovery home. There, amen. So that's what's going towards all those things. And for those that don't know, we just kicked off a base there in Costa Rica. Hello, somebody. And that's what I'm talking about. Our finances go before we are like, can you please rent us a place? We're trying to bring some drug addicts to your house. You're, you're all laughing like, oh, yeah, because you know, it's hard to go and tell somebody, hey, I'm going to use your house so we can help some drug addicts. My house? You're going to do what? Hello. So this way we can just purchase. Oh, you didn't, you didn't cash that one. And nobody can tell us anything. We just do what we got to do because we got the cash. Come on now. And we're able to move and mobilize and do what God called us to do freely. Amen. Hallelujah. So thank you for your giving. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for showing up for the movie nights even though you didn't feel like it. Hallelujah. Even though you didn't feel like cooking in the morning, you didn't feel like doing it, but you did it. So thank you. We appreciate you for all the hard work and your sacrifice in doing so. And I believe so. I believe that God will bless you. I know. I don't believe. I know. Hello, somebody. That God is going to bless individually in your life, especially for what you have done for Run for Hope. Amen. And then this week, we're going to have Halls of Hell. We don't celebrate Halloween. We call it Halls of Hell. Amen. Does everybody wants a piece of hell? We're going to bring them. Hallelujah. What happens uh, for, it's a, it's a, it's a, 
It's an event, amen, that reaches individual and got little different scenes of actual things that takes place in our normal life. But the outcome of that is the consequences of your sins. Hello, somebody, right? And then we'll have an altar call. It's going to be nice because we want to make sure we give honor and glory to the King of Kings. Amen? So it's a good time to bring your kids, your unsafe kids. I want to go see the trick or tree. I want to go. Okay, I'm going to take you to a place. This is going to scare the hell out of your life. Hallelujah. That sounded bad, huh? But it's, that's the way it goes. Hallelujah. Amen. So why don't you open your Bibles to the book of Proverbs, chapter 6. And I'm going to continue to speak about breaking out or breakout season. That's our theme for the months. How many of us need a breakout season? How many of us, just two of you? How many needs a breakout season? If you don't need it, amen, meet me after church and let me know your trick. Hallelujah. Because I want to know. Inquire wants to know what's going on. I don't need prayer. How do you do it then? I don't need fasting. How do you do it then? Right? I need a breakout season and we're coming to that place. If you're struggling, you've been going through some difficulties in your life, amen, you're due. Come on, you're due. You're due for a breakout season. Amen. But we, we must remain faithful. So won't we stand for the reading of the word? Thank you, son. You got me on the time clock, so I got to go. Hallelujah. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 31. When you have it, say amen. amen. If not, it'll be up there, I believe. The NIV Bible reads, it says, Get if he is caught. He must pay sevenfold. Those, though it costs him all the wealth of his house, but a man who commits adultery has no sense, and whoever does so destroys himself. Amen? Let's pray again. Father God, we pray for your word. Bless it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Turn around to somebody sevenfold. Oh, I didn't hear nobody. Come on. Sevenfold. All right. You can be seated this morning. How many of us, like, uh, in the world, how many of us, for those that were out there in the world, I know some of you guys got halos. No broken cup or glass or a paper cup. Hallelujah. How many of us know the term payback? So you guys, how many know the term payback? Right? I know that in our world, in, our, in my life, in my little world that I had out there, we called it payback. Payback is when somebody hurts you, do something, you're going to what? Do back. Payback. And how many of us, amen, in our lives have been robbed of something in your life? Somebody stole something from your life, gunpoint, knife point, or just anything, hallelujah, just because. Lift your hands if you have. And how many of you guys love people robbing you? Nobody does. Are you sure that you don't like to get robbed, stolen, taking your stuff from you? Come on now, right? You don't sit at home, the thief comes at your house, says, hey, go ahead, I'll help you with that TV that I just got. Don't worry about it. I'll, you want me to put it there? We want rope? Hello, we're going to fight. Are you with me, right? First of all, some of us, we like to we used to fight. We probably fight and call it self-defense. I don't know. Hallelujah. But uh, some of you guys will call 911 and say, hey, I, I'm, I'm, I'm being uh, robbed. And the King James verse or scripture translation in verse 30 says, men do not despise a thief if he steals to satisfy his hunger, his soul when he's hungry. Verse 31 says, but he is found and he is stored sevenfold. He restores sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of your house. Everybody say thief. thief. And we know that when we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ, we have the devil has a mission statement in John chapter 10, verse 10. That's his mission statement to kill, steal, and destroy. Pretty simple mission statement, not complicated. A lot of times when we come to Christianity, we want to make it complicated to serve the Lord. How many believe that? Man, this is complicated. 
man, I got to do what? I got to serve. It's complicated. We make it complicated. Why? Because sometimes we want, we still want to hold on to some things that God don't want you to hold on. So therefore, we make it complicated. When God just wants you to serve God and surrender God and just serve him 100%, not 10%. He's not talking about give you 10% to me, amen, physically. But he's talking about give me your 100% of your life. And that's when it becomes complicated. Why? Because then he's going to intervene within your life and make you, think, make you do things that you've never done before. Hello, somebody. You're not in the same old, same kind of lifestyle no more. If you're in a ministry like ours, we're going to require for you to serve and help us do, you know, things that, you know, you've never done before, like the halls of hell. I need you to participate. I need you to be a demon. Oh, that's easy. I used to be that all day. No, I'm just kidding. Right? I want to do something else. Can I be an angel? Or whatever it is. I don't know what they got, but I'm just saying, right? They'll require to do something, participate, to do some different things in your life. But the Bible begins to tell us, talk, talks to us, and tells us that there's one enemy that likes to kill, steal, and destroy your life. And I don't know if you've ever seen the news or know people or, I want to say yourself, then, it, but I'm just saying, know people or family that are actually being robbed. And has escalated from being robbed to death. You see that in the news? I just went over there just to rob him. But he ended up being a murder. Because when the devil comes to your life, not only that he wants to steal your life, but he wants to kill it. Can I get an amen? And by killing it, it happens to be a destructive area. Can I get an amen? When a real thief comes in your life or comes to you and robs you, amen, he don't want to leave no evidence behind. So, therefore, you are the witness. And by killing that individual, it creates destruction from who? Destruction from that husband, right? Destruction from that wife, whoever happens. She becomes a widow overnight. Things begins to be what? Destroyed within your life. Because we allow the enemy to come in and steal from us, hello somebody, and destroy us because we were willing individuals. Listen, willing individuals to live that lifestyle. Nobody forced you to do that lifestyle. That's what it's called free will. Can I, are you with me this morning? Are you understanding what I'm saying? To serve God, you must serve God as a free will. It has to come from your free will to go and do the things of God. Amen. And nobody's forcing us. Nobody, hopefully nobody forced you to be in church. Nobody wanted to pick you up with a gun. You better go to church or else you're going to end up in a hospital. Hello, somebody. You came willingly. You came because some of us told you about it. Come, let's go to this church. Pastor has no mercy. You better come ready. Put your shields. Hallelujah. Why? Because it speaks the truth. We don't, they're not there to pat you on the back, tell you it's going to be all right. Hello, somebody, when you're in, in the midst of what? Of your struggles, say hello, somebody. We always got an answer, and the answer is called Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Yeah. Why? Because I, I wasn't saved all my life, or I wasn't a pastor all my life. I've been in the world. I've seen it, done that. Can I've seen it, done that, and I can write a book about it and have my wife make a T-shirt. Hello, somebody. Right? We've been there. We've done that. That's what I love, our ministry. Our ministry it's unique. Why? Because we focus in reaching those that are messed up. Yes, I said it. We're all messed up. Thank God that we were messed up, that God saw us fit to be part of the bigger picture. Can I get an amen? When nobody thought that we would be part of anything, but now because you're in the house, now because you're in the room, hello, somebody, God is willing to do greater and mighty things within your life. And I believe that that's why the theme of breakout season fits with us. If you believe it. You have to believe it, though. You can't just shout it out, I believe it, and go home and don't believe it. I believe for my breakout season. And I want to let you know this morning that, that, that somebody owes us some, some stuff. I won't say somewhere. I'm going to say the devil owes us some stuff. Because the Bible says once he get caught, he must pay. And if I'm correctly, amen, the Bible says that he's the thief. Are you with me? 
If I'm correct, he's talking about the, uh, the thief that comes at night and begins to steal within your life things that you thought it was precious within your life. We call that restitution. Even in the world, if you get caught stealing or robbing, you end up in jail. Don't lift your hands if you've been in jail because half of us probably been there. Hallelujah. Like, yeah, I got to go tomorrow and turn myself in. Restitution. You ever heard that word restitution? You ever heard the word compensation? Right? It's not foreign to a lot of us because we've been to court before. And it has to do with court injustice. When somebody do, somebody do somebody wrong, right? We call it, they found them guilty. The judge found them guilty. He must what? Have some restitution. It's called fines. You familiar with fines? You commit a DUI, driving under influence, you get pulled over, you get mad at yourself because I only drink two beers, but it shows that you drink more. And you get arrested, they take your car. If you have somebody to call and you usually don't find nobody to call, you end up in jail for your DUI. You don't want to call nobody because you're embarrassed now. Well, you call mom, though. Hello, somebody, right? And now you have to pay your restitution for doing wrong. Why is it wrong? Driving with the influence because you could kill somebody. And, and, and that sense of driving. There's been people that have been killed under the influence of what? Alcohol, drugs, or whatever it is. Can I, are you with me this morning? Not only people that, that you don't care for, but innocent people. Are you with me? Usually the one that is the drunk one doesn't get hurt. But your friend next to you is the one that gets hurt. The person behind you gets hurt. I'm okay. I was the one driving. I was okay. Yeah, because you were flimsy. You went with the flow. Hello, somebody. You'll get that one tomorrow. <laughs> Amen. But then they had to pay what we call restitution. The court finds them guilty. If it's a first offense, then they'll let you out, and you have to go what we call to a chemical dependency counselor to evaluate you to see if you are a alcoholic. By going there, then there's restitution. It costs you money. It's a fee, 250 bucks, just to get the intake. Go to chemical dependency class, it costs you over 2,000 bucks. Restitution. You must pay. And if you don't pay, it's going to go bad for you. Hello, somebody, right? You end up in jail. What happened after that? You lose your license. Your privilege. License is a privilege to have. Watch it when it's taken away. You're like, oh, my God, I don't have no license. I got to take the bus. Oh, my God. It's a privilege. That's what we got to take care of. What we got to take care of. Are you with me this morning? I'm trying to teach you something. Restitution takes place. So conversation must be taking place for those individuals that are found guilty. Hello, somebody. And then the victim is the one that get their restitution or whatever that is. It could be a lawsuit. It could be money coming to them. It could be those fines that you're paying that goes toward that individual. Are you with me this morning? But, you know, the word restitution means giving back, making up, or compensation. And Proverbs uses the analogy of a thief to bring forth a point of restitution. Say restitution. And if the thief is caught, he must make a restitution to the owner to pay back Sevenfold what he has stolen. Imagine that, sevenfold. And if you've ever been to court, sometimes you say, well, this is ridiculous kind of fines. I've got to pay for this and that and that. That's called restitution. Are you with me? I'm trying to bring a point this morning. So hopefully, I'm trying to bring it down to some of us, our level, understanding court, fees. Hello, somebody. Does it pay to drive and drunk? Doesn't pay. I used to do a chemical, chemical dependency class, and I used to do a board, and I would say, who's the one, who has the most DUI? Yeah, and they'd be excited. I got four. I got four DUIs. Going on my five. They get excited. They do. I said, all right, come over here in front. Tell me how much it costs you to, how much it costs this beer? Uh, this much. You say, oh, okay. Cheap, huh? You're cheapo. You went OE, O English, cheapo. Malt liquor. Oh, cheapo. Trying to save some money, right? 
But then you give them the cost of what happened, the consequences. Comes out like $20,000 in debt. For real. Now you're in debt. Now you have to pay back. Because you got what? Caught. Are you with me this morning? So thank God that, you know, God comes to our picture. We have a victory homes that come to trust to help you out and get you right. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Restitute, pay him back. Let me give you my life. God begins to what? Restore what the enemy stole from your life. Are you with me this morning? See, the sevenfold payback, the definition of sevenfold is the word sevenfold carries the number seven. Say seven. It represents full, complete, perfect. As we know that number seven is the number of perfection. Right? God created the heaven and earth and created humanity in six day, but on the seventh day, he rested. Seven day completion, perfection. Can I get any man? Everything falls on the number seven. Even into the speaking of the word this morning, seven fold. In full, completion, perfection, you must pay. But what do I want from the devil? The devil don't give you nothing good. Right? But whatever he stole from your life, he must give it back to you. But because for, uh, for me, he got busted. In my life, he got busted. I saw you coming from afar. Hallelujah. I saw you coming for my, for my wife. I saw you coming for my children. I saw you coming to my house. I saw you You got busted. Hallelujah. But if you don't have the eyes of an eagle, they can see the enemy from afar. Hallelujah. If you don't have an eye of a tiger that is alert. Hallelujah. And ready to attack. If you're sleeping. Hallelujah. If you're lazy, the devil will come to your life and take everything that you always thought that it was valuable to your life. Are you with me this morning? But for those that are diligent, those that are alert, those that are not dummy, hallelujah, right? Those that are not fools. Are you with me this morning? Right? We've been around the block. Some of us, I've been around the block 20,000 times. Well, why are you stuck in the same spot? You got to be somewhere else. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you getting something this morning? Right? Why? Because we repeat the same old same, end up in the same old spot. See, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He, becomes, he begins to uh, rob us for what God wants us to do. He gives us complex. Hello? He steals your confidence. Are you with me this morning? For those, they steal your wife. For those, he steals your family, your wife, your husband, or your children. For those, will steal your goal and your visions. For those individuals that are still your unsafe family members. You might not see it, though, because you're far away, but that's what he's doing. Hello, somebody. Now, all of a sudden, they don't want to talk to you no more. They don't want to see you no more. That's called stolen. You ever explained that before? The enemy wants to bring division. So 7-4 begins to tell us, amen, that it's full, completed, Perfect payback and comfort, comfort, compensation. Amen. So the devil comes steal and to come to kill, steal, and destroy in our lives. And we must be people that are vigilant. Vigilant means alert. Right? If you ever been to a club, don't lift your hands if you have. In the world, I like to go back and forth, amen, for those that are here. Go so you can relate. You've been to a place that's dangerous. Clubs are dangerous in my time. They were dangerous because I was a gang member. It wasn't a place to have a good time. I needed to be vigilant. I needed to be alert. I couldn't be like drunk and I'm partying. No, I need to be vigilant and alert because I know I had an enemy in the house. Hello, sir, are you with me? Those that are not vigilant and alert are people that are fools. Thinking that the devil don't want to do anything in your life. Thinking that you're okay. We've been deceived. Can I get an amen? The devil don't want you to get a hold of God. 
Because once you get a hold of God, you become a deadly weapon in the hands of God. Can I get an amen? Once he, you get a hold of God, like hey, get a hold of God for real, not just, just on a Sunday, but, but for reals, you become a deadly weapon in the hands of God. Why a deadly weapon? Because you can go where other people cannot go. You can go to the alley, you can go to the byway, you can go to that highway, you can walk in the midnight hour and evangelize and have no fear. Why? Because you did it before, but you did it for the opposite side. Are you with me this morning? See, God wants to use your tools and his hands to reach the uttermost. But if the devil is allowed to come in your life, He will steal the most precious thing in your life. Right? When I got my wife, I got my dog, my kids are happy. They're okay. They're doing good. But eventually something happens. Are you with me this morning? Am I talking to somebody this morning? And what he does, what he does, the devil does, he, he's, he begins to collect those things. He's, for me, I call him the collector. He collects everything that he stole from your life. And he puts it what we call a storehouse. Say storehouse. storehouse. And it's crazy because you find that scripture in Isaiah, listen to this, 45, 2 and 3. Isaiah, let's turn there. Isaiah 45, 2 and 3. Everybody knows what that is? Victory Irish people? Yeah. Promise scripture? Right? I'm trying to teach somebody here something, man. Hopefully you catch something and become, I want to be vigilant. Hallelujah. It says, I will go before you and I will level the mountains. I will break down gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. That sounds like jail. Verse 3, it says, I will give you hidden treasures, riches stored in secret places. That's why I promise scriptures so defined. Identifies who we are, right? In other translations, they call it storehouse. So the storehouse, amen, and the King James talks about the storehouse. It means it hidden riches in secret places. So a lot of us, amen, we were stolen, and we were placed in a storehouse. I was here all the time. So I don't know what you're talking about, Pastor. I've been here all the time. Like, look, you know, I'm talking about your soul. Your will, your purpose. Because I don't know about you, but I, when, the, when I was in the world, I had no purpose. You can say, well, I had a purpose. Gang banging, hurting other people. Don't tell me you had a purpose when you out there doing drugs. I had a purpose to get the next fix. No. He begins to steal the, your dreams. Starts in a small five years old. Six years old, seven years. He starts early. He don't wait for you to be a teenager because teenagers, teenagers didn't know it all. So I know that already. So I'm going to start early. Catch him early. He begins to steal your goal. And I can give, give you an, an analogy. How about us in high school, and not high school, but in kindergarten and first grade, they said, what you going to be when you grow old? Some of us say, hey, I want to be a, a police officer. I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to be a nurse. Nobody in the right world says, I'm going to be a gang member. I'm going to be a cholo like my dad. What's up, teacher? I'm going to be a bank robber. I'm going to be a pimp. Are you with me, right? Or were you that kid? Yeah, I want to be a pimp. <laughs> I don't know. Nobody has, no, they want to become, a, they want to have a career. Am I telling the truth? Because I remember I want to be a fireman or I want to be a cop. And so people say, you want to be a snitch? You want to be a cop? You know? So I changed my career. Hallelujah. But something happens between five years old to 18. The, the devil is already working. One day you want to be an officer. Now you're not an officer. You're a thief. One day you want to be a fireman, now you're lit up stuff on fire. The opposite. Are you with me this morning? Are you getting something this morning? Oh, it just happened to me. 
Hello, somebody. You know, not so, not too many people will keep that goal going. Hallelujah. It's rare that they say, Dude, look, I was five years old and I became a doctor. Look what I'm doing. It's rare. For people that live in dysfunctional families. People that live in an abusive relationship with mom and dad. Or even mom, just mom. Are you with me this morning? Right? They have survival mode. I got to go to work. I got a two job. I got to take care of my kids. Kids are left by themselves because they have to provide. Now you're doing drugs and doing all kind of stuff. Now all those things are taking place in your life. And you find yourself in the web that you can't get out. Are you with me? Are you, am, am I talking to somebody here this morning? That's called the enemy. That's called the devil stealing what God has purposely had for your life. And the reason I started with five because the Bible says that he knew you before you were born. In other words, for God to know you before you were born, he already had a purpose for you already since the get-go. Before you came out, before you got slapped in the, in the butt, hallelujah, you start crying out, hallelujah, whatever it was, God had or has a purpose for your life. You were not an accident, my friend. You were not born because they didn't want you. You were not born out of, you know, I'll find you in a trash can. Find you, you're walking aimlessly in the streets, so I picked you up and stole you, kidnapped you because I wanted a kid. No, you had a purpose in life. And you still have a purpose in life, but what happened is the devil has come in your life, all of our lives, and he has come rapidly and taken all the stuff that God purposely put in your life. Are you with me this morning? It's called sin. It's called deceitfulness and destruction within your life. As long as you understand that I stole those things from your life and get it, it meant it wasn't your doing, but it was the enemy's doing, hallelujah, then you become more wiser when you get older because you don't want to call, begin to have what we call a generation curse. In other words, you don't want your kids to suffer the same way you suffer. Unless you're like, I don't care. We all, all of us love our kids. We want them to do better. Are you with me this morning? So therefore, amen, God wants us and knows that, knows that you can break those curses. It's called generation curse. In the world, they call it biological sin. Not sin, but biological problem. Your dad was an alcoholic. Eventually, your kids will be an alcoholic. Or even worse. If your mom was a prostitute, then your daughter going to be a prostitute, a pimp, your dad, well, I don't know, whatever, it's generation curse. You understand what I'm saying? When I met my wife, she was a single, single parent. When she met me, I was a single parent. So we're a blended family. When we got together, we're a blended family. My wife got pregnant at a young age, in high school, right, with Selena. So she got pregnant at an early age. So we consider that my wife and I consider that as a generation curse, right? And we talked about it, and we pray about it. My kids don't know this, but when my, my kids were getting to high school, we'll pray, Lord, please, Lord, let's break that curse, Lord. 16 came by, 16 years old came by, 17 came by, all right, come on, 18. 18 came by, all right, 18. 19 came by, all right, woo-hoo, woo, one out. She didn't get pregnant, hallelujah, with a baby, one broken. Then the other one came out, we still got two more, hallelujah, let's go. Some way, somehow, we don't worry about the, about the boys. Ah, forget them, hallelujah, it's all right, they got it. But the daughter was like, oh, come on. And then she gets 15, 16, come on, 17, come on, 18, come on, 19, yes, Lord. And then we got the last one, Caleb. Oh, come on, please. And he had a girlfriend, too. I'm like, oh, Lord, please. <laughs> yes, Lord, please. Hello. Right? Some of you guys seen her. She used to bring her here, her girlfriend. I'm like, oh, Jesus, Lord. It wasn't the girls. It might be him. Come on, Caleb. Hallelujah. And we will pray. He don't know that, but we will pray for you. Lord, please, make them wise. Don't make wrong decisions, Lord. Come on, Lord. Don't allow the devil to come and steal the purpose. Are you with me this morning? Right? Because a lot of us say, well, your kids are serving the Lord. No, it took, it took a lot of 
And it took a lot of understanding that the devil's a thief. Can I get an amen? That I cannot compromise to the right or the left. I got to believe that the curse can be broken within my family. Hallelujah. And for me to understand that the curses can be broken, I must make an effort to change the outcome of who are living today. Are you with me this morning? I can't be the same guy that I was yesterday or 10 years ago. I got to change. I got to change. I got to change in order for me to expect change within my family. Are you with me this morning? And after that took place, I looked up and I started praying sevenfold, Lord. Hallelujah. You must pay sevenfold. The curses have been broken in my family. Hallelujah. At least with my, my, my first generation. Are you with me this morning? It's been broken by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Are you with me this morning? Because some of us don't understand that generation curses are there. Find out your kids doing crazy things, you'll be like, what happened? I go to church. You were not vigilant. You didn't watch YouTube. You didn't watch all your little stuff at the midnight hour because you didn't want to deal with them. They were nice and quiet. Yeah, because they were entertained by the world. Our responsibility is to be those parents. Don't allow the enemy to come in through little gadgets. Hello, somebody. Why? That's why some of the kids are disrespectful. Because they see that in TikTok or they see it on YouTube. Little kids being spoiled. Hallelujah. And disrespecting their dads. But they disrespect us. They still get the old school belt. Hallelujah. And I wait for the cop. Pick me. It's all right. <laughs> and when I come back, you better not be here because I'll whoop you again. But that's not right, Pastor. It's my house. Are you with me? Here, call the cops right now. You can call them right now. I'll call them for you. I just whooped them right now. Yes. You just come pick me up. I'm like, hello. Right? Because apparently that old school stuff works. The little talking stuff is still not working. Let's talk about it. You have a time out for 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Man, I used to be weeks before I saw the lights. <laughs> Am I the only one? Huh? You were in, pun you were, you were in, in punishment? You were in punishment. Uh, right? You were in, you didn't even come out to see the light. Can I go? No. No mercy. Hello. Now it's five minutes. That's too much. Let's go. Play. Let them play. It's okay. Here's, here's the ice cream. Go ahead. And then you reward them. We won't even give nothing for a reward for doing bad. But that's my parenting. That's the new stuff. That's your stuff. My stuff. My kids went through already. Hallelujah. I don't have to worry about it. I got to worry about my grandkids, though. That's it. Are you with me? That's for somebody out there, man. So the devil comes in and does those things and begins to what? Store up those stuff, the stuff they've stolen from your life. It's called storehouse. Hidden, hidden riches and secret places. In Victory Average, that's our, that's our, our, our promised scripture. To go to the storehouse and begin to get back what the enemy stole from your life. Are you with me this morning? God has called us not only to reach the hurting people, but he called us to take back what the enemy stole from your life. There's a song like that, right? Right? I'm going to the enemy's camp to take back what? What? I'm going to the enemy's camp. And we go like that. Take back what the enemy, like he's going to give it to you. Like, yeah, you got, give me the money. Bro. Like, no, it's mine. You take back what the enemy, and we do the little moves. Like, Come on, buddy. Air it together. <laughs> take back. Do it twice. Take back. You don't even know what you're taking back. I don't know what you're taking back. I know it's something to take back. <laughs> Hello, are you with me this morning? He begins to steal what we call authority that God gives you. You know, God's giving you authority to trample what? Oh, you know this. He's giving you authority. Snakes and scorpion symbolism or symbolizes the things of the world. The, the evil spirit, the, the temptation, the, 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 the constant pressure. 
It comes in your life as soon as you leave this place. I don't think about it right here. Yeah, because this is holy grounds, my friend. Something about me going over there and come back, I feel the peace in here. Yes, it's called Holy Ghost. You can have that at your house if you take authority to trample trample on scorpions and snake. Don't call your wife snake. You play Tupac, I got to play this and that. I'll step on your snake. Don't do that. We're going to have counseling afterwards. Hallelujah. Pastor said, give me authority to trample on snake. You're a snake. You're playing Tupac over here all the time. I got to play some worship music. Some Holy Ghost steppers. I'll give you, give you some promo right there. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost. Hey, it's all flexing. I got to have some worship. I got to have some rapping. I got to some, some stuff in my house. Hallelujah. You're over here playing Tupac. He's dead. Oh, that's my song, though. But he steals what we call authority. That's why a lot of Christians walk around with no authority. They don't listen to me. They don't flow with me. Yeah, because the devil stole your authority, your influence. Why does the pastor have authority and influence? Because I'm not allowed the devil to take, take my authority. Hello, somebody. I don't allow the enemy to take my anointing. What do you mean allowing? I see him coming. I'm like an eagle on top of the mountain. Like, phew. But my kids are, you're always suspicious. I suspect everybody. <laughs> it's not called discernment. It's called back in the day, it's suspicious. I'm suspicious. That don't make no sense. Just chill, man. You're like tripping. Well, that's, that's a habit I can't break, man. <laughs> you know, and God says, don't you, you can't get rid of it. It's part of your anointing. Don't worry about it. Be suspicious. What are they doing there? Hmm. They used to shout and scream yesterday, but now they're all walking all downcast. Suspicious. Why well, don't have the joy of the Lord? Yesterday they had it. What happened? Suspicious. I just, I'm just sick. Oh, okay. Thank you for clarifying because I was very suspicious there for a minute. Hallelujah. You had me over there in the world, so we're thinking about crack houses and stuff, hallelujah. Right? Are, are you getting something? Hopefully I'm talking, teaching, preaching. Hopefully you're getting, hopefully you learn what I'm saying because he, he, he does stuff that you think you, you never do. Not only he'll take, I'm talking about Christians, he'll take your authority, but he'll take your faith. One day you will, you have faith to move mountains. Now you have no faith to reach your goal. Long for whole goal. One day you have big faith. God can do anything. He can move mountains. Look at that. And then when you get tested and your abilities and your capacity and your faith, we shrivel back. I got him. Now the next thing you come across, you have no faith for. You know what it becomes? It becomes they want your money. That church, that's the one. They want your money. And I was sitting there thinking, I've been in the world, I've been saved 17 years. Not saved, be here, here 17, I've been saved since 94. But I believe that I spent more money, if you agree with me or not, in the world that I have given to God. All added up together. I spent more money out there doing foolish things out there. Never complain about it. I didn't say, that dope man wanted my money. They all want my money. Of course they want your money. Hello? They're trying to build them, their, their kingdom. Are you with me this morning? But if you come and do the mathematics, it doesn't even compare to the much stuff that you gave away willingly than you have given to the Lord. Are you with me this morning? Some of you guys understand that or agree with me. Some of you guys don't. But it's all right because I've been in that world and I spent a lot of money in that world. And I have nothing to show for. I can't say, well, this is still my, this is my ride from back in the day. This is my, nothing. 
Gone. Because my Bible says whatever you build your house in sand is going to be destroyed. And whatever you build out there on your own, that's mean sand. When the devil comes to steal. Not only steal, but he gets, he's so addicted to that stuff that he all goes to the next level to kill. Leave no evidence behind. Are you with me? This is like, everybody's quiet. What are you talking about? I'm okay. Oh, he stole your attention. Anyway, I could go along. Anyways, not only that, that he stole your faith, faith, but he also thinks that are God's gifts and blessing in your life. Like a beautiful family. That one time you had a beautiful family. Gone. Things that you say you never do, you do it. You used to do. Yet now you're saved. I don't do it. But things you I never thought I was going to do that. But I did it anyways. <laughs> your beautiful family. Gone. You can blame her. You can blame him. You can blame the kids. You can blame the neighborhood. You can blame whoever it is in your life. But make sure that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. That's what he does. That's his job. He don't want your family to get a hold of God. Like I said earlier, because if he gets a hold of God, that's a powerhouse in the hands of God. He don't want that. The devil don't want that. So therefore, he's going to do whatever it takes to begin to what? Chip away. Chip away, chip away, chip away. If you're not careful. Not only your beautiful family, but your kids. They come and steal it. Even when you're serving the Lord. I'm going to share this. I, I'm going to share this. But I, the enemy came to my house years ago. Some of you guys have been here before with me for that experience. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. On my own house. Hello. Some of like, I still got it all together. It's all right. It's all good. Yeah, yeah. He, that's for him. The devil don't bug him. But the devil came to my house. Disguised as a leader of the church. Somebody I trusted a lot. He was my home director, not Tim. Dr. Tim. No, before Tim. And he used that individual to come infiltrate and steal one of my girls. I right there in my own house. Somebody I trusted. Somebody that poured out. And I got real quiet. Don't tell me the devil don't try to come and steal, kill, and destroy. Because the first reaction as a man and as a human being is to what? Take care of business. Pay back. Are you with me? Right? I trusted you. You came and snuck and took my daughter, not Gabby. Hello? Play me. Hello? Play me like a guitar. When Christian played me. I can laugh now. But in that season. I got I had people backing him up. In the church. That's that's wrong, Pastor. What's wrong? What are you talking about? Marriage was broken. Relations was destroyed. Accountability and character was down low. Never walked in that step before. Never been in that season before. All eyes on deck. Like eagles watching me to see what I was going to do. But I had to wake up that morning. Stand right here. And preach a message. When I had, was. The devil came to my house and stole. One of my daughters. Hello. Make him. I have a saying. Don't let the devil see you sweat. And I preached my own heart that day. Well, half of the church was pointing the finger at me. For whatever reason, I don't know why. I'm like, what the heck? Hello. 
My daughter was gone. Hopefully she sees us. She'll get mad at me. This part is stealing. It's theft. She's probably about to have some Osari. Hello, right? But as a human being, I can preach it now. I couldn't do it before. I went into my old school mode. That's a dangerous spot to be at. Old school mode, worldly mode. They used to call me stalker in the street. Not because I was stalking girls. But I would stalk my prey, my victims or whatever, enemies. I would watch them like a hawk. And I get them in the weakest part. Hello. So I would like, I'd be driving because I was looking for her. Like, I'll find you. My wife would call me like, what are you doing? Chilling? <laughs> Where you at? Hey, over here. Hello, are you with me this morning? But he, he took me to a spot. So you're not a, you're not a uh, exam of the enemy coming and stealing. I'm not exam. But I, what do I? What did we do? My wife and I. We kept on marching. We kept on praying. We kept on fasting. We kept on getting a hold of God. We kept, even in the midst of what was going on, because my head was blowing up. Hello. My head was blowing up. And I would tell my wife, man, I'm thinking like I used to think. How you used to think she never knew me in the world. Like, perfect plan. Hello? Are you with me? But I will go in prayer. I will fast. I will pray. I will face the people. Even though they criticize me for whatever reason, you know, or whatever. I had to sit here. He came to the church and people were looking at me like, because he came back. Thank God for that. Amen? After much prayer, he got dropped. She got dropped out of the house, and then we start working with her. Send her to uh, Whittier, to the leadership up there. She left there. We end up sending somewhere else, trying to find him. We send him to the home somewhere, trying to still find some hope. Are you? I understand. We didn't throw him to the curb or anything. We try to find some hope. You might be able to do it here. You might be able to do it over there. Or is this a lot of damage control that I got to take care of right now? And then she ended up getting a hold of God. And Hello, somebody. And then she was able to get married. Come on, right? And then she was able to do what she had to do. She's blessed with a good husband. I don't say that too much about guys that try to look at my daughters, but he's a good dude. Bobby is. Now you know who it is. I only got three, so <laughs> I said, guys, she's my mini me. She's strict. She preaches like me. But my weakness was that I didn't see the devil coming in disguise. I didn't recognize the enemy. And sometimes the enemy comes to your life, you don't even recognize him. He comes like, like an angel, disguise. And I'm pretty good. I'm pretty suspicious. I say that. I said it before because I'm suspicious of things. Like, mm, what's going on with that? What's going on with that? And it never hit me. Are you with me? So the devil will come, disguise an angel. For those that are looking for man, I want a husband. I want a wife. Sometimes they come disguised. Man of God. Sounds good, smells good, speech right. Oh man, he's anointed. Woo, woo, woo. Hallelujah. That's what I want about the Lord. But that man without the Lord? You're talking about seven times, seven, seven fold? I'm talking about seven times worse. I don't know. 
But a lot of times when we come and you look at our church and you look at my family and you look at what's going on, you say, man, they got it all together. Well, no, we've been through some stuff. So real deal stuff that for anybody could have quit, throw the towel to get it done. Especially with people that came against you for no reason. Like, what the heck? What did I do wrong? The enemy came to my house. And you're like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh. Destroy a family. A marriage. Hello. Is that okay? Are you with me? See, a lot of times, you don't, we, think we go through our little stuff and we, we tolerate those things. And the devil comes against that stuff in the Bible and Revelations. I got something against you. You tolerate, you tolerate the woman Jezebel in your life. Sin. You tolerate sin. So therefore, I got that against you. Are you with me this morning? See, God, what I'm trying to tell you here this morning, the God is, the devil's ready. He must be ready to give us sevenfold what he stole from us. Not only did he try to steal my daughter, but in return, I got a son-in-law on fire for the Lord. In the midst of disaster, when everybody said, what the heck? What did that happen? Hello? God brought in, said, I got you. And brought Bobby. Now they were in Chicago doing the will of God, doing the calling of God. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Sometimes you're going to go through trouble. You, you want to blame things. No, no. You should look at yourself, begin to look at, did you see it coming? Were you alert? Were you wise? Hello, somebody. Are you making the right decisions? Because your wrong decision can bring destruction with your life. That's why you go and get advice from those that have been around for a while, those of faith, hallelujah. Your leaders in, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? And we'll give you the answer, or we can give you whatever answer it is that we feel that God has called us to do. But it's your job to say yes or no. And sometimes they do no. And then they find themselves, I should have listened to the yes. But it's okay. It's part of humanity. It's part of things. Are you with me this morning? Now, I know that the devil, for a lot of us, He's been busted. He's been caught. And he needs to go to that storehouse and begin to release those things that he stole from your life. Some of you got, he stole your vision. Your calling, he stole your calling. One day you wanted to be a pastor, a missionary. You wanted to travel the world and preach. And <laughs> Some of you wanted to go to UTC, wanted to do this and that. One day I'm going to be a pastor's wife. <laughs> Ain't even know it. I just got robbed. What the heck? What happened? What happened? Ah, never mind. Instead of going back to your knees and say, God, the devil stole my dignity, stole my character, stole my thing, but I hope you see me righteous. I hope you see me right, and you will bless me. Hello, somebody over and above. I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to do your will. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith and believe for greater things. Hallelujah. Because God is not done with us. The devil will come, but don't give up because he came in. Hallelujah. Make sure you press in even harder. And that's what we did. We got to fast more. Man, the devil probably said, man, what did we do? Should have left him alone. Now for that, I'm going to launch it out somebody. Now for that, I'm going to launch another one. Now for that, we're going to launch this one. Now we're going to do this, hallelujah. Because you mess with us, now we're going to steal some stuff from you. We're going to, set the, we're going to steal some soul. We're going to go to the streets, hallelujah. And we're going to go to the hidden places and begin to take the stuff that you took, stole from my life, hallelujah. How many of us want to make sure that you get your stuff back? That he must pay back. Or oh, you're okay with that? That's why I said, you're okay if somebody comes rob you at the beginning? Not okay to come to your house and take your stuff, and you're like, go ahead, take it, let me help you. No, you put a stop to it. No, you ain't taking that. Shoot. 
Yeah, I'm taking that. I don't care what the leader said. I'm not there for the leadership. I'm there to serve God. And God called me to this church. I'm staying here. I'm gonna, they're going to have to kick me out of the door. Hallelujah. But I'm not walking out willingly. I'm staying here. I'm here. And to, if they kick me out, then they kick me out. If they kick me out, I'm going to crawl through the windows. I'm here. Hallelujah. If they kick me out, come out to the back door. Show up. What's up? I'm right here right now. Are you with me this morning? But don't walk willingly. If they stole something from you and it wasn't the leader. It wasn't the pastor. It was the devil that stole it. But we want to blame somebody. We like to blame people. It was pastors preaching that said they did it. It was the tithing offering that did it. It was that sister that came on me bobbing her head. And, no, you didn't. That's what did it. And she a Christian. That's what, I'm, that's what did it. I'm out of here. No, the devil just stole your position. Stole your authority. Stole your faith. Because you allow those small things. Yes, I say small things. Because they're small. Come to my shoes. Experience what I experienced when the enemy come and stole my daughter. And then you tell me what's small or big. Hello? You tell me that's big or small. There's somebody bobbing your head and you walked away. Or somebody told you, hey, brother, you got to dress up right. Puff up a little bit better. You're single, bro. How are people going to look at you all tore up? Show some dignity or something. Hallelujah. Oh, you better love me like I am. <laughs> Show some dignity. Uh, right? Anyways, amen. Thank you, Jesus. I had to share that this morning. Because sometimes we think that the devil don't steal nothing from us. And sometimes we willingly give it to them. Because we're scared of the devil. You should be scared or have fear of the Lord. You shouldn't be scared of the devil or the enemy or his influence or whatever it is. Why? Because greater is he that is in you than the one in the world. Can I get him in? Greater is he that is in your life. God is in your life. He's greater than the enemy. He's the victor. Hallelujah. He's never failed you, never forsake you, never have you begging for bread. The Bible says, hallelujah. If you're righteous, he will never have you begging for bread. In other words, if you don't have nothing, God is going to provide. He's your Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Rapha, your healer. Hallelujah. Your doctor, your physician, your future. You got to believe that this morning. Sevenfold payback time. The leaders that he took from us. I need multiply. You stole those some of the good leaders. I need four of those. Hallelujah. Back. Oh, you don't believe me though. I pray for that. I take it serious. When somebody leaves the home, oh, you somebody left, you better be be me two or three of them that are good and qualified and quality. Hello? Everybody go, oh, he left. What would he No, I get on my knees. You just stole his life right now. You got busted. You owe. You better pay up some good stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Are you with me this morning? How many, how many believe this morning that you, you got something coming for you? If you believe that this morning, if you believe that you got, you got, the devil stole some stuff from me. Hello, my kids. He stole, oh, I can't even, I can't write you a book. If you believe that this morning, why don't you stay with me, come to this altar, say, man, it's time to pay back. Stay with me, come to this altar, say, man, I need some things restored, some restitution to take place with in my life. Hallelujah. Restitution must be paid. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, 